Hi, Manna family. How many of us pray because we want God to change something? You know, God, when he responds to our prayers, sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait. Sometimes God says no because we pray with wrong motives. James 4.2 says, You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. Today, we're going to take a look at a request made of Jesus by a relative named Salome. And part of her story is told in Matthew 20, verses 20 to 23. Here's the context. Jesus and his disciples are moving up from the Jericho area, down by the Dead Sea, uphill to Jerusalem. Jesus has a date with the cross within about a week. So this is very near the time of the crucifixion. And his aunt Salome comes up to him, his mother's sister, with her two sons, James and John, who are Jesus' cousins. Now, Salome, thinking that she has an inside track because Jesus is a relative, makes a request of him, trying to get her boys promoted above the other disciples. As a matter of fact, above anyone and everyone else. And here's what her request was. Matthew 20, verse 20. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, bowing down and making a request of him. And he said to her, what do you wish? She said to him, command that in your kingdom, these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right and one on your left. And Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? And they said to him, we are able. He said to them, my cup you shall drink. But to sit on my right and on my left, this is not mine to give, but to those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And hearing this, the ten became indignant with the two brothers. Now, in the coming kingdom, the Messianic kingdom, Jesus will reign from Jerusalem and he will rule over the entire earth. Salome wanted her sons, James and John, to have the highest honor of sitting closest to Jesus right next to the throne. What she really wanted is them to be in positions of exaltation and James and John were in on the deal. And it says the other 10 disciples were angry, undoubtedly because they thought we should have thought of that and asked that for ourselves because they were arguing about who was the greatest. Now, in fact, someone will sit next to God's throne, but that's the father's prerogative and no one else's. Jesus said to them something very interesting. He said, you do not know what you are asking. That is so true of us as well. When we pray, God says, come. Let's have a conversation. Ask and you shall receive. And many times we ask for things and we really do not understand what we're asking for. We ask God for things that from our earthly standpoint make perfectly good sense. But God understands those requests in light of his infinitely wise plan. And based on that, he may say yes or no or wait. We're like the little child that wants to play with his bright, shiny object and doesn't realize that it's really a very sharp butcher knife that can harm and cause great damage if not handled well. Salome's request was just pure and simple. And James and John were as greedy for gain as she was. Now, Jesus, interestingly enough, doesn't just say no. He asks them, do you understand the cost of discipleship that it involves death? And they, of course, were, didn't know what they didn't know. And so they confidently said, we are able. And in fact, they did drink the cup that Jesus drank. The cup that Jesus drank referred to his death. James was the very first apostle martyr for his faith. He was beheaded by Herod. And tradition says that brother John was boiled in hot oil. He survived and was exiled to the island of Patmos where he wrote the revelation. Those who want to follow Jesus will experience what Jesus experienced. Remember, Jesus followed the will of his father even to the cross. And those of us who follow Jesus need to lay down our wills and our selfish desires and follow Jesus wherever he leads. This is why Salome's request was denied, because it was selfish. It didn't exalt Jesus, it exalted her and her boys.
See, prayer is about earthly communication with our Heavenly Father. The purpose of prayer is not to persuade God to do what we want. Prayer is God-centered, not human-centered. We don't pray to get God to agree with our plans, although I think sometimes if we listen to our prayers, it would really sound like we were trying to get God to agree with us. Prayer is really about moving us to agree with God's plans. It's comforting to know that even when we ask with wrong motives, even when we ask for the wrong things, our Heavenly Father knows what's best, and He will never do anything other than what is best. So when our Father says no to a request of ours, that's an act of love. When He says yes to a request of ours, that's an act of love. And when He says wait, that's also an act of love. Our Heavenly Father really does know what's best. That's why Jesus, the very Son of God in the Garden of Gethsemane, ended his prayer with, Not my will, but thine be done. We should remember that. And remember, God always answers prayers according to his will. That's a good thing to pray. Remember, God designed us to do life together. <laughs>